since 92, we've had this excise tax. For every case or every hectoliter of beer that we brew, we have to send Ottawa a check. We have a, a tax that is increasing. And it's a real challenge for any manufacturer because, in effect, we're asked to be the government's tax collector. Scott Hennig here, President and CEO of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. I've, uh, I've booted our normal hosts out of their chairs because this is, uh, this is my two favorite topics, beer and taxes. And I was, I, was sc- you know, I was scrolling LinkedIn the other day. I saw a post raising concerns about the federal escalator tax on, on alcohol. It happened to be written by the CEO of Moosehead Breweries, Andrew Oland. I reached out to Andrew. He's agreed to chat more about this, about beer, taxes, Canada's largest family-owned brewery. And he's with me today. So thank you for joining me today, Andrew. Thanks, Scott. My pleasure to be here. Now, I, I would love just to get right into taxes, but I think it's probably useful to introduce Moosehead to our audience. So uh, when did it start? Who started it? And where do you brew your beer? Yeah, in uh, 1865, uh, Susanna Olin, that would be my great, great, great grandmother. So three greats. Uh, she left Canada with her or left England with her nine children uh, for Halifax, pursuing the Canadian dream before Canada was a country. Uh, She arrived in Halifax. She was able to secure some uh, funding. And she and her, and she'd been a brewer, uh, as many women were at the time. And she'd been a a brewer back in England. And so in 1867, the same year that the country began, uh, Susanna and her husband, John, started S. Oland and Sons Brewing. And uh, here we are, 155 plus years later, you know, Susanna and the family uh, dealt with a number of issues through the first uh, few years, but she was able to uh, to prosper. And then each generation has uh, has uh, dealt with everything from you know the Halifax explosion to my grandfather going off to World War II, uh, and obviously uh, you know a little bit of a pandemic in the last few years. But we've all had some some ups and downs. So we are located in uh, St. John, New Brunswick. That's where our corporate head office is. Uh, we do have a very small brewery uh, in suburban Toronto, but the vast majority of the beer that we brew comes out of uh, our facility here in St. John. So I, I, I've always considered Moosehead a, a, an Atlantic beer. I mean, I, I guess uh, that's just maybe it's just me, but whenever I have someone move in from Atlantic Canada in my, in my cul-de-sac, I go and buy them a case of Moosehead and I make them feel at home. Uh, but I don't know, where, where do you sell most of your Moosehead beer? So it, it's it's interesting. In in the early '60s, my father went to a speech, and the the uh, logo above the speaker said "Export or Die." And uh, about 15 years later, we started selling in the United States, and we were selling in the United States before we were selling in the rest of Canada. So we were only in in the, in the maritime provinces in the United States, and then as Interprovincial trade barriers have evolved and uh, and slightly loosened over the last 25 years. Um, we're now selling across Canada and uh, and our top market, not surprisingly, would be the province of Ontario just because of uh, of, of the size. Uh, and then we still have a have a nice business uh, here on the east coast and are, are growing in the rest of Canada. Now, I, I'm sorry, I've heard that uh, Thailand is a big market. Is that true? I, maybe this is just one, one of my directors said to me, is I asked him about Thailand because I was in Thailand and you could get Moosehead anywhere. Is that true? Um, it may have been at one point. Uh, we, have a, we have a sort of a opportunistic uh, international business. We do about, uh, we're in about 15 different countries uh, right now. Um, and they are, uh, they are all over the world from... Uh, you know, from South America, Central America, through to Europe, through to uh, through to Asia. A lot of it just be- depends on getting the right importer relationship as well as the shipping lanes and how that works out. Okay, fair enough. Um, still, fa- so is it still family owned? Moosehead is still uh, family owned. So uh, my father, Derek, is our uh, executive chairman and he's... Uh, He's generation five and uh, my brother Patrick is CFO and I'm CEO. And so we're generation, uh, we're generation six and we are the uh, Patrick and I are the shareholders. And then we've had uh, six of the 11 uh, generation seven members have worked at the brewery in one fashion or another as a summer student. And uh, and we're working hard to, to get to generation seven. Oh, good for you. Well, now, surely you've had offers from one of the big companies come in, buy you up. Is that something that, that you or one of the other Olins in the past has has ever seriously considered? 
Yeah, I mean, we we have uh, we have these overtures from time to time, and uh, and uh, you know the bigger players in the industry are uh, they always make themselves so make it known that if they want to, uh, if we ever wanted to have a chat, that they'd be very receptive to that conversation. But, you know, we're, uh, we're very proud. Uh, if you think right now in Canada, there's about a thousand breweries. Uh, and of those thousand, four uh, go coast to coast uh, in terms of having a full portfolio across. So I'd be obviously Labatt, Molson, Sleeman, which are all uh, divisions of multinationals, Canadian divisions of multinationals. And so we would be the fourth in size much smaller than the other ones, obviously, but fourth in size. And so we're very proud to be you know, uh, the largest Canadian brewery. Oh, good for you. Owned okay. by Canadians. Now well, that's, that's excellent. Um, let's talk about cost structure. And I don't, I'm not asking you to give any competitive secrets away here, but what, what goes into getting a beer from start to finish? And I'm not, I'm not looking for like recipes, but more like if I go to my local liquor store, pick up a 12 pack of Moosehead, how much of that is cost for ingredients and labor, packaging, transport, profit for you and the liquor store owner? And then how much of that is going to various governments? So um, I'm glad you're sitting down, Scott, and uh, hopefully your listeners are sitting down because uh, in the U.S., there's about four dollars per case. And the case is a 24 pack of 355 mil cans. So a 24 pack of cans, there's about four dollars of combined state and federal taxes on uh, on 24 cans of beer. Believe it or not, in Canada, that number is $20 a case. <laughs> and so uh, about 47% of the cost of uh, beer in Canada is taxes. And it's actually above 50% uh, in some provinces. So if you think about, you know, you're going to uh, you're going to your local store and uh, uh, in Alberta there and you're going to buy something. It's probably in the thirty five, thirty six, thirty seven dollars for, for a, a 24 pack. Um, you know, the, the margin for the brewer, as well as for the retail, as well as all the costs have to come out of that second half of the cost. OK, so there's two governments, though. So you've got the federal government and you got the provincial government and then you've got both their taxes, but also you've got the markups, which effectively act as the same thing as taxes. So can you break that down even further for me? Who's getting what chunk of that uh, of that and, and how does it break out? Yeah, the, uh, the, the twenty dollars is roughly twenty five percent feds and seventy five percent provincial. Um, it's it's. That's that's the that's the rough breakdown uh, that you know the feds are getting it through through the excise tax, which is the purpose of this call, as well as their per portion of the of the HST. The provinces it varies, but they're getting their portion of the HST, and then from province to province, it's either a straight tax or it's some type of of markup. It just depends on the province that you are uh, you are in in Canada. For example, in some provinces in Canada. Every time we raise our price, the province just raises it the same amount. So if uh, if we raise our price, if the price of beer goes up a buck, then the brewer is getting a little less than fifty cents. Hmm. And, and so and the taxes we have in beer in Canada, you know, they would be among the highest in the world. Uh, they would be up there with the Scandinavian countries, and uh, yeah, it's it's unbelievably high taxes. And, and your taxes is both federally and provincially are based on how much, correct me if I'm wrong, how much you're brewing in a year. Is that like, so you're, it's based on the, the hectoliters and the, and the, the amounts yes. bigger brewers pay higher taxes than smaller brewers. Is that right? So um, at the federal level, uh, there's a sliding scale. So uh, we would all pay the same amount on, you know, the, the first, uh, a relatively small number of hectoliters, 10,000 hectoliters or so. Um, and then uh, above that, we're all paying the same. So there is a, there is a, a discount, there's an incentive, and, a, and it helps the smaller brewers. Uh, in most provinces, that exists, but that, if you're above a certain size, then that doesn't apply to you, and you pay the full amount on the uh, on the whole on, on all of your sales. And that would be the case for us, for example, in New Brunswick. We're local in New Brunswick. Um, we're paying our full markup on every hectoliter we sell, and we've got small competitors who would have a discount on the first fifteen thousand they sell. 
and I, I made a note for myself, do not use the word hectoliter because people don't drink their beer in hectoliters. At least we hope they're not drinking their beer in hectoliters. So what, and I'm sorry, maybe I'm putting you on the, on the spot here to do the math, but what, how many, how many cans or how many cases of beer are in a hectoliter? Yeah, roughly divided by 12. That's a hectoliter is 12 two fours. 12 two fours. Okay. That yeah. makes sense. Okay. Thank you. And I, I, I'll stop using the word hectoliter because I, I can hear, I can hear the uh, uh, eyes glaze over there. It's, yeah, uh, it's the, it's the industry, it's the industry number. And I'm not going to try to, uh, I am going to give these numbers. So example, so the highest combined sort of federal and provincial taxes would be in PEI at about $26, uh, actually $26 a case. Uh, lowest to be in, in the province of Quebec at $12 and 72 cents. And uh, it's interesting in New Brunswick, uh, our price are, are about $21 and 72 cents. The price of a case of beer is, is combined federal and provincial taxes. And in Quebec, it's only $12 and 72 cents. So surprise, a lot of people in New Brunswick who live close to the Quebec border buy their beer in Quebec for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, we estimate that somewhere between 15 and 20% of the beer that's consumed in the province of New Brunswick is actually, uh, is actually purchased in Quebec. So it's just a very living example of what happens when you have uh, taxes that are too high and out of uh, whack with your neighbors. Yeah. I think the same, same thing in the city of Ottawa. I don't know anyone who buys their beer in the city of Ottawa. They drive across the, across the river to Gatineau or Hull and buy their beer there. It's uh pretty common practice. And I mean, incentives matter, taxes matter. And, and, you know, that's, that's why we're, that's why we're chatting about it. So you've, you've answered my next question about which provinces uh, charge the most. And is I guess just to clarify too, on the difference between some that have taxes, some that have markups, is it mostly because you have some that are government owned liquor stores and some that are private owned liquor stores? Yeah, yeah exactly. That would be, that would be the difference, but the markup just is a, it, it flows through the provincial uh, liquor board to the uh, to the the province in profits. Right, just another way to say tax. Yeah, okay, exactly. so let's move on to the escalator tax. That's the one that you were writing about, and the one that uh, that is most uh, urgent right now. Um, just for a primer for someone who hasn't heard about this yet, what what is it? When did it come in, and how does it work? Yeah, so. Uh, some of your listeners might remember in 1992, that was when the GST was introduced. And the idea there was to get rid of taxes on manufacturers. Uh, the federal government decided at the time that they would still keep uh, the federal excise tax, which is in, a, which is in effect a, a tax on brewers uh, in place. And so since 92, we've had this uh, excise tax. And what that means is that for every case or every hectoliter of beer that we, uh, that we brew, we have to send Ottawa a check. And so uh, in 2017, Finance Minister Bill Morneau decided that that wasn't good enough and that he wanted more money. And so that that was going to that, uh, tax was going to increase by CPI each year. And so now uh, we have a, a tax uh, that's, uh, that is increasing. And, and it's a real challenge for any manufacturer because in effect, we're asked to be the government's tax collector. Mm -hmm. right. Right? Like if I don't like the, the high taxes on beer, but if the government wants to introduce a, increase the taxes on beer every year, then they should do it. They shouldn't ask me to be their tax collector. And that's what's happening with this escalator. So it's, it's going, been in since 2017. It's been going up every year, though, and that's compounding. So do you know what the, what the compound increase in the federal tax has been since it's been introduced? Yeah. So, um, so for example, for Moosehead uh, in 2017, it was about $10 million expense a year. And then next year, it will be uh, over $14 million. Wow. And for you know, small companies such as Moosehead, we have paid cumulatively since 2018, we've paid seven and a half million dollars of incremental tax. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, that's real money. I mean, that's uh, you know, that's uh, that that's going to make a difference. Um, wow. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of interesting when when this was first introduced, you got things like, well, you know, inflation's only, you know, one and a half, two percent a year. Right. You know, it's only, you know, half a cent a can. Like you, you start to hear these sound bites and stuff. 
you know, of course, you know, we're filling at a thousand cans a minute. So you take half a penny and you add by a thousand cans a minute, it adds, it's, it adds up. It's real money, right? It's, it's, it's over a million dollars a month for us. Um, but then uh, the other thing is, you know, no one anticipated that inflation would be so high. And so we already have the number from the, the federal government. So uh, it's going to be a 6.3% increase that will yeah. go into effect uh, April 1st. Uh, unless uh, unless there's some uh, decision by the, the government, we're asking government to just freeze the tax. Um, and, You're being uh, too nice. You're being too nice, and they should repeal it all the way back. Well, that's that's certainly uh, <laughs> that's that's what we'd love to see. Um, but uh, yeah, our, our 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 formal request is please freeze the escalator. Yeah, well, that's. I mean, you're right. I mean, and it's 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 bad enough when inflation's at one or two percent. It's really really bad when when you're hitting. You said six point three percent, right? Yeah, that that's is, that's the number. It's baked. You know, it's sort of it's 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 not going to change unless they make some type of uh, decision to, to to freeze. It will be six point three percent in April first. And is it also six point three percent for like wine and spirits? Are they also impacted? Well, this is Canada, right? So of course it's a little complicated. So uh, it is for spirits. Uh, so they'd be treated the same as as uh, as beer. For domestic, for foreign wine, so imported wine, uh, it is uh, it will also be the same. But for the domestic wine, they will pay it. But then there is a program in place which essentially rebates them back the amount that they pay. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, you're not going to get uh, us lobbying for a program like that, but we will certainly uh, be pushing for them to repeal this and repeal it all the way back to 2017. It's, uh, you know, they've, they've never stood up and, and voted in favor of this uh, each year since then. It's really it's really an unaccountable tax. Um, so, I mean, and I think, Scott, that's a, that's a really good point is that. Um, you know, this uh, this just happens. It's automatically it's it, it doesn't require a vote of parliament because it was passed par once by parliament. Mm -hmm. And uh, and, you know, we live in a democracy and typically taxes each year have to be have to be voted on. And particularly in a world where the, you know, the federal government uh, does not have a majority. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I mean, this was put in a place in a, in a whole different government. And, and yeah. it continues. That's a right. Yeah, you know, I haven't thought about that. That's a really good point. And so, you know, if they, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure if they had to put this single issue to a vote, they wouldn't get it through Parliament. Yeah, you're probably right. Well, and we would certainly, if we knew that was coming to a vote, we'd certainly get people uh, harassing their MPs. But I mean, so so we we can maybe get people fired up about this. But I got to say, most big beer company CEOs aren't willing to publicly criticize the government like you did recently, like you're doing now, and like you've done on LinkedIn. Why speak out now? Well, I've been, you know, this has been a sort of my top issue with with anyone associated with the federal government since 2017. And I've had I've had multiple conversations, written multiple letters with a with a plethora of uh, of MPs and cabinet ministers and obviously have not been successful uh, in terms of the issue. And uh, this is a real issue for the beer industry in Canada. And so, um, you know, I feel very comfortable uh uh, speaking out about it. Uh, from time to time, we have various elected officials who, who like to visit the brewery and we're happy to host, uh, uh, regardless of the, the political affiliation, so we can they can learn more about us and they can learn more about the Canadian brewing industry. And so uh, feel very comfortable telling this story. And, you know, it's, it's interesting you, you, when you talk to various government officials, you, you, you do get a sense of support and you do get a sense of traction, but we just mm -hmm. can't seem to get the puck in the net on this one in terms of uh, freezing the escalator. Well, that's fair. Well, I guess if, if you've got, we've got fans of your product listening right now, what advice would you give them to help keep the costs of, of the product they like going up due to the escalator tax? I have one really, really simple ask. If they could just reach out to their MP, whether it's a text, whether it's a call, whether it's an email and just ask them to freeze the SIS tax on beer. Great advice. And that's the same advice I'd give as well. And, and I'm, I'm really glad to hear you say that. Andrew, I want to thank you. And I also need to thank you. Uh, there's a, a kind of a unique personal thank you. Our, our vice president uh, of communications, Todd McKay, lives in Moose Jaw. 
Uh, he asked if I would say thank you to you uh, personally for uh, uh, paying for the the increased antlers on their moose. Uh, uh, before I let you go, what's do you know? What, tell me the story about this. Yeah, this is this is classic. Um, apparent, you know, the, the the moose and moose jaw has been there for many many years as a symbol of uh, of moose jaw. Uh, a great uh, Canadian uh, city, and then I think it was I think it was Norway. I think this, that's right. Uh, this this uh, town in Norway decided they want a bigger moose, and so um, went back and forth a little bit. And so we were able to uh, help the community and come in with some support, so the moose could. I don't know if you call it a mooseumbectomy or what, but anyhow, <laughs> the the moose's antlers were enhanced. Uh, the Norwegians agreed to a truce, so the moose jaw moose is uh, is the largest in the in the world, and uh, great to support that uh, fabulous community and just have a little bit of fun. Well, Todd, Todd is thankful. I don't I don't think his house is in the uh, the shadow of the antlers, so uh, he's happy and uh, wanted to pass along that thanks as well. So thank you, Andrew. This has been really uh, really interesting, and uh, hopefully we can get some traction on this issue with a lot more beer drinkers pushing their MPs. So thanks so much, and keep up the good work. Thanks so much, Scott. Really appreciate the support of you and your team and all your listeners and supporters. Thank you. You know, this is a fight the Canadian Taxpayers Federation has been on since the escalator tax was first introduced. In addition to beer, wine and spirits getting hit with this tax, you know, our worry has always been that the feds might look to expand this concept of automatically hiking taxes every year. I'd encourage our audience to sign the petition calling for an end to this escalator tax. There'll be a, a link in the bio or the show notes or whatever the smart people who put this thing together will uh, will put it. So you'll, it'll be easy to find. Trust me. Thanks, everybody.